Hey, and welcome to 996 The Howl for the Uninitiated. This is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes. And I hope you guys wanted this after five months of waiting for NHL hockey. We're back to this old Coyotes frustration and just disappointment. And we would hope it would end at some point, but no, it continues. Um, honestly, other than changing their jersey to this, I mean, there wasn't much else the Cowboys could have done last night. They got Gibson. I, I warned you all that John Gibson was an elite goaltender, but some other areas they could have worked on. But at the end of the day, I mean, Coyotes just completely dominated possession and offensive zone time after the first period. I mean, the first period was kind of like the only period the Anaheim Ducks skaters that weren't Gibson showed up to the game. There was brief moments where the Ducks were actually hemming the Coyotes in their own zone. And I was like, what's going on? Coyotes are obviously the better team. They didn't win, but they are the better team. They're getting hemmed in their own zone a couple times for like extended periods of time. But then they righted the ship starting the second period. And from then on, the Coyotes just completely dominated the game. Their possession numbers were about over 70% from the second period on compared to the Ducks. And uh, they got some shots. They got 31 total shots. But uh, looking at the shot chart, shot chart, the shot chart, 14 of 31 shots were from the point. And so that's about half. You know, 14 out of 31, it's about over 45%. So about half of their shots were from the point. I felt like the Coyotes weren't crashing the net much and they weren't generating so much traffic. No one was getting the eyes of Gibson. They did have about five to seven grade A chances that would have went in on other hockey nights. I mean, this game was totally deserved as a Coyotes win. Uh, a couple bad breaks where Kajula misses an open net and just completely whiffs on a pass. Uh, and not scoring. I guess some pauses were the Coyotes were way more disciplined this game. Only one penalty, which was a too many men penalty, which wasn't even a factor. You didn't have to call it, but there was too many men on the ice. But I'm glad they didn't have a parade to the penalty box that that trend started from the beginning of the season. Hopefully, hopefully they can t continue to play like they did against Anaheim in terms of discipline. Their penalty kill was great against whatever chances the Ducks had, I think about two or three. Kemper is back on his game. That's three games in a row of Kemper being Darcy Kemper and uh, giving the Coyotes whatever opportunity he can for the Coyotes to win the game. But the power play for the Coyotes, I say this almost every video, I don't know what's happening. That Keller and Kessel power play unit, they just stick so much to the outside and the passing is so slow. There isn't quick passes. And uh, I don't know why Keller is on one of those sideboards like Kessel. I feel like Hayden's better situated. Hayden's got a better shot. Like I said in previous videos, he's got experience on the World Juniors being on that sideboard position rather than being the bumper position. I feel playing Keller would be better as a bumper player because he's more of a playmaker doesn't have such a hard shot. He has a good shot, Ke uh, Keller has, but I feel like he doesn't like to shoot. He'd rather pass it to an open guy. and He's always looking for a passing opportunity first before a shooting opportunity, whereas Nick Schmaltz has a great shot and likes to shoot first compared to Keller. So maybe try Hayden on the sideboard and Keller more in the middle of the ice. Speaking of Hayden, no Coyotes reporter no broadcaster, no post-game interview questions, commented on the fact that Hayden Fisher and uh, Johan Larson were benched or had their ice time limited after the second period. I mean, if you look at the shift totals for this team and total time on ice, uh, those three forwards are just glaring players that sat much of the third period, whether it was due to injuries or their bad play which I didn't think that either of those three guys had bad play to be benched. Maybe they're injured, but no one asked, except I'm just some Joe, you know, some average Joe who just looks at stats and sees that there's three forwards that didn't play much of the third period. They all had about 10 minutes or under. Christian Fisher had seven minutes of total ice time. Hayden and Larson had about 10 minutes flat of ice time all game. They had only 12 shifts compared to other forwards who the next forward was Lawson Krause 
with 17 shifts and about 17 or 18 minutes. So that's a glaring discrepancy. And as the game went on, you know, in the last six minutes of the game, I kept seeing Broussard and Pitlick on the ice. And they looked like they were out of gas by the time the last minute rolled around. So I'm, I'm wondering why, you know, he was benching three forwards where they could have, you know, taken some ice time away from the Broussard and Pillick so they can rest more and get some juice back. And Hayden and Larson and Fisher, they weren't playing bad, so I don't understand what was happening there. Maybe it will come out today that they were banged up and they couldn't play, but three players in one game being banged up seems pretty improbable. But uh, other than that, uh, those are my complaints. Power play stunk. They didn't crash the net. They didn't get in the eyes of Gibson. They got to rectify that Thursday night where they face them again. And then they go on a six-game road trip. So, I mean, the season is the season's getting on. It's rolling along. You're finding yourself not getting points in games where you deserve to get points. It could snowball quickly. And they're already at the bottom in their division. It's not you know too bad because the division is so tight. It could go on a two, three game, four game win streak and gain it all back. But they keep letting points slip away in these close games and these frustrated games. Uh, the Vegas one ended on a bad call. This one ends because you can't really score on an amazing goaltender, but you have all the possession you could ask for. They just got to execute, crash the net, and uh, they got to solve their scoring problems, which, is, which has been an issue this whole talk it era. I'm not going to talk about talk it too much, it's too early for that. Uh, Jordan Gross was playing instead of Victor Soderstrom. Aside from that one glaring mistake where I had to close my eyes, where he fumbled the puck on the blue line, he, he corrected himself, shorted up, shorted up his problems, played a pretty great game, much better than Kyle Capobianco, seemed comfortable with the puck, um, looked comfortable in every area. Uh, I could see him and Soderstrom and Labushkin rotating in that position until Oliver Eichmann Larson comes back, but... It's good to see a good showing from Jordan Gross and uh, not getting too shaky after that terrible mistake he had. But, you know, that's it for me. They got to pick up some points. I mean, these regulation losses are ramping up. Hopefully they don't get their morale too down in the dumps. There's so many good positives out of the past two games. They just got to score. Like, a lot. they've grown so much from last season where their possession numbers are so good. They're playing so much better in the offensive zone. Just got to get that scoring knack out of their system and just try harder and crash the net more and just use some deception and make the goalie move laterally a bit much. I felt Grimson wasn't moving much laterally. He was square to each puck, each shot. So maybe move... You let Gibson move more, uh, make some more desperation saves. I feel like he only had about two or three desperation saves that he had to make. Just uh, use some more skill, less shots from the point, more in the middle. Use some deception, some good passing plays. Uh, I hope they saw him Thursday night. They got to get a win before they get on the road, full stop. This is kind of a must win Thursday night against Anaheim. So uh, we'll see. It's a tough season so far. Um, you know, everything was looking good against San Jose. Then I guess Vegas kind of created all these problems and frustrations. And they're running into a hot goalie. Hopefully he's not hot Thursday night. And uh, Cowboys get some offensive confidence. So they know that they can continue to do what they're doing. Because they're doing a lot of good things. You know, I wouldn't change much. Just the power play. Crash the net. Get some eyes in front of Gibson. And uh, see where you go from there. The defense and the goalie side and the PK is doing well. I'm not going to complain about any of those things. Um, but yeah, so that's it for me. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support.